this thing working? Yeah, I think so. So, uh, oh, well, let me bend down and get in the shot. Don't even have a hat on, but that's okay. All right, so we'll cut and start there. So um, today's fun project is actually one that I started accidentally, what, three months ago now, I think it's been. Um, the accident was I was going to go change out the um, double filter apparatus that I've been using uh, for the uh, 20, Travato 59G shower. So the shower drain, uh, just as a quick review, only affects the G model. It's actually pumped under the axle uh, and into the gray tank, which is under the kitchen, instead of in the rear. Um, the filters like to clog. You need a filter because of the type of pump that if the gunk gets in the filter, then it can't seal as it pumps. Um, and then it'll stop pumping correctly. And that's an expensive pump. You know, these guys are expensive pumps to have to replace. Um, and by expensive, I mean like, you know, $89 at um, maybe 70 with a good Sam discount at um, Camping World. Well, I had a little bit of an accident. I was going to say I was having a lot of success with the big filter instead of just the little filter that it comes with. And I thought, well, who needs the little filter, right? Um, so instead of the the water coming in the big filter and then going from, yeah, this way, from the um, big filter through the small filter and then into the pump connector, let's just take the small filter out and run with only the big filter. Since the big filter is good enough to get the stuff that's going to clog the pump, or rather filter the stuff that's going to clog the pump to keep that from going into the, uh, into the pump causing problems. So big filter good enough, remove the small filter. Okay, simple enough, except that when I tried to go ahead and make that uh, connection, I screwed it in and I went like that. And I snapped, you can see it there, there. Um, I snapped the um, plastic. Now, I think what happened was that a long time ago when I was assembling the one pump on the other, it actually started to weaken the plastic and I heard a little bit of a crack sound. And, and, and the problem, of course, is that you have You've got a big lever here. You've got a big physical lever that the the messing around with trying to clean the filter repeatedly is causing a lot of stress on that connection. And eventually it's, it, it broke loose. Of course, it broke loose as I was trying to snug up the um, fitting with the old filter. So, what to do? I'm on the road. I'm driving around places, and I've broken my only... G filter. Now it just so happens, not that I realized this at first when I got my G, later on I realized this, well, I realized once when I pulled out the <laughs> pulled out the now broken pump and realized that, wait a second, this is exactly the same model as the water pump that feeds water through the systems. So all they're doing is using the suction side of the same pump. I mean the, the water pump will actually suck hose, sorry, the water pump, the pressure pump, will actually suck water up the hose in order to get it um, into the pump and pump through the systems. Of course, that's not necessary in the case of the G, well, most RVs, I imagine, because the water tank is actually level with the pump. The gravity itself will get the water to the pump, as I realized when I've unconnected the water connection to the pump with water still in the tank, and it was just dribbling out. So. Um, but the problem is, even though it's the same pump, I can't, I can't take my um, existing water pump out to fix the shower drain, because <laughs> you know I kind of need both of them to function in order to take a shower. So, uh, a project that I had been planning since this was now a dead pump. I mean, the plastic's broken. Uh, the only thing I could do is buy a new pump. I did actually uh, end up buying a new pump. It's up in the toolbox on the roof, waiting for me to get around to. Um, uh, uh, maybe someday swapping out the um, slightly leaking water feed pump. 
Um, but in order to be able to shower on the road, I'm like, oh, what am I going to do? And I realized that I had on board, because I hadn't gotten around to installing it yet, the hot water pump that I had planned to use for water recirculation, for hot water recirculation, in order to bring hot water all the way over from the hot water tank. In my case, I have a Fort Island electric water heater tank. In other model, in later models, of course, that's a, a, a Truma. But you still have a run of hose in a G model between the hot water and where it's actually getting used in the shower or the sink here in the kitchen. So um, the issue then becomes um, that water pump is meant as a hot water for solar hot water uh, research pump. It just keeps the water flowing, but it can't suck the water up the hose. If there's air in the line, it's just going to sit there and spin. So I'm thinking, you know, well, that's kind of useless. It's not going to help me. It happens to be the right fittings. It's a 12-volt pump. But even though I could swap that pump in, it's not going to work. I mean, it might work once I got enough water that I'm, like, just about the flooding stage in the uh, bathroom uh, basin uh, that, you know, the water might, you know, finally even out and get to the pump level and, and actually suck it out. So... Like, well, I'll give it a try, but I didn't expect it to work. Well, three months later, that pump is still installed. And except for one time, a couple of days after I first installed it, just to check on it, I haven't touched that pump yet. So we're about to dig into my under the kitchen sink and have a look see at just how sticky of a situation that how, how gummed up that pump is going to be. Um, and, and show you how easy it is to make this change. And this is a no filter change. So both filters and the pump removed. I could have put a filter in it, but you know, anything that's going to impede the water flow getting to the pump is going to be a problem. So let's have a look at that. Let me stop this. We didn't stop. Okay, so we're back on, yeah, it's recording, and I have uh, removed all the stuff from underneath the kitchen sink, and we're going to open this up here, have a look. Here's the pump. This is the inlet side, this is the outlet side, and this is the same two connections that was on the uh, original uh, pump and filter apparatus, and it's just a pump. Uh, one thing I did do is I went ahead and attached a matching, let's see if you can see that, uh, a matching um, Molex connector. Uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and disconnect this. This was the power connection that was going to the original pump, and so I put a matching plug on the new pump. I did that actually a bit later after I realized I needed some more some of those. So this is the pump. I originally got this one. I've got some other ones that I think are the same uh, model and will work as well. Um, yeah, yeah, that's the same design. Um, but we're going to open this up and have a look see at, at uh, what the condition of this is. After many months of many showers start with the inlet side here. And it's important, this is a centrifugal pump. Of course, all pumps are directional. They go in a particular direction. But it's easy to tell by the design of this pump um, what the direction of flow is. On a centrifugal pump, the center is where the water goes in. And somewhere along one side of the pump is where the fins, the propeller, if you will, of the pump slings the water out a hole. So input and output. So now let's open this up on camera. Oh my gosh, I don't know what I'm going to see. And the last time I had this open, just to see, because I was really expecting, I've, I've been expecting this to fail. I've been expecting this to fail for months. Um, 
I want to see how badly gummed up the mechanism is. Again, this was a hot water recirc pump. Available on Amazon. If you don't want to grab one and do this mod. This is like 20 bucks on Amazon. And I'll post the part number that I purchased. I've got some other pumps from a different source that aren't as pretty looking but are the same technology that I'm going to try out. Um, and this is supposed to be, you know, screwed down to something, but I just set it down in there and it seemed to work. So here's the big reveal. And sure enough, there is a nice gummy gunky of gunk on there. There's going to be a washer on there, should be. Yeah, there's the washer. So it, I got all this usual would get in the, caught in the filter gunk. Throw that in the sink. And then the way this works is that this should. Oh, it doesn't pull out on this model? Apparently not. Okay, so this is made a little different than the one ones that I'm looking at doing. But the impeller blade is exactly the same. And it looks like it looks like this. So it's flinging the water as it spins in this direction. It's flinging the water out the output hose. So, and that's it. I mean, literally, that's all I had to do. Four screws, clean off the gunk. I don't see anything hiding it in the back there. So if I plug this back into the power feed and turn it on once, we can see it spinning. Get that plugged back in. I'll just uh, see if I can get away with setting it there for a second. And that's it. It spins. It's actually moving air. And I think this is why it's working. Is that this thing's acting like a fan. You can feel the air come off the sides of the pump all the way around. Turn that off. And so what's happening is it's giving a slight bit of suction um, enough to help the water finish coming up to the pump. I'm going to put the screws back in. It would help. Now, that is... It was still working. It was still spinning. But that was three months worth of gunk on the pump. Um... And all it was doing was, um, so when, when, when you turn on this pump, it just sits and spins with, um, in the air. It's not moving the water until the water gets up to the blades. And then it moves it pretty quickly. So what would happen as I would shower is that the water would accumulate. It would accumulate for quite some time. Sometimes even after I showered, there would still be water in the basin. And then finally, when it caught, and I never had to wait more than five minutes between turning on the pump and it, and it actually starting to pump out. Once the water got sucked up the hose enough, just from the slight difference in air pressure, presumably by the fins of the pump spinning, then the... Um, water hit the fins and then the blades and then it was pretty quickly, I mean 20-30 seconds done and then it would be gurgling. Once you hear it gurgling you turn off the pump. Um, so that's it. I mean this is a solar circulation pump. I've got a different model that I'm testing. It's a different I thought it was exactly the same manufacturer but it turns out the um, motor is a different design it doesn't have the water uh, bearing here. It's a, 
spins the um, blades based on uh, uh, changing the coils around the circumference um, instead of a conventional um, this looks to be, I don't know without opening up the motor body, but this looks to be a conventional pump. As soon as that ba bearing on this side goes, that pump will go. But, I mean, these are meant to sit there and run continuously, or mostly continuously, uh, in a solar situation where you're circulating the water through your uh, hot water on the, on the roof collectors, or whatever, wherever they are, but, you know, in the sun. And that's it. I mean, you can screw this down, but literally that's all I've done is taken the input pipe that comes up from the corner over here, uh, comes up from the floor, connect to the input of the pump, and then the output side, of course, doesn't matter. You want to keep the input side, that's tight, you want to put, keep the input side as flush to the ground as you can, so it doesn't have height to overcome. But the output side just connects right on. And it doesn't matter if it's on the ground or not, since that's on the output pressure side. So that's all there is to it. The uh, get a good shot of this in here. Comes up there from underground, well under the van, comes into the pump and then out. And as you can see now, Without that big, huge pump and filter set in here, I have a whole lot more space that I could actually reuse um, or store things in this, in this space. So, and that's, of course, a good thing. Um, so that's it. Uh, this is the pump. I will put that on a URL, uh, the exact pump that I purchased on Amazon. Um, and my plan is to hopefully have some alternative pumps that I've tested uh, available with the connector already on it. So it's anybody wanting to do this who's not necessarily as electrically soldering, uh, mechanically inclined as I am, uh, can simply unscrew and screw this alternate pump in and, and be ready to go. And that will be a link to uh, on a website when that's available as well. So that's it. New pump solution. Pump only, no filter solution to draining the G shower on the Travada. Enjoy.